sometimes we don't realize that there is a lot we can do about our daily sources of stress we created for ourselves, even though it might be hard to admit at the beginning. Having too many kitchenware items translates into having a sink always full of dirty dishes. Too much mindless shopping results into bill payments we can't afford anymore. Piles of clothes everywhere around the house and still the need to go shopping because our closets feel empty. When we're under this constant stress, everything feels like it has the same urgency. Prioritizing right feels impossible, and we end up being overworked, having to constantly outsource because we are always too tired to invest in our own labor, and this cycle only goes on, and we keep feeding our most immediate needs without a plan for our life. It can be very overwhelming to declutter your life all at once. So here are a few simple steps that help me stay on track of my habits. Know your why. Keep reminding yourself of the very reason why you want to start getting rid of everything that is excessive in your life. It's a crucial step to achieve the desired life you envision living. To me, coming to the realization that I was collecting more things and clutter instead of collecting experiences and travels and having the time to enjoy the simplest daily pleasures with my family was my why. Also being able to make wiser use of my limited and most precious resources like time and money. I wanted to be done suffocating my motherhood years in my endless to-dos. And I simply wanted to stop living a limited version of myself. Use your journal, keep post-its, whatever you can visualize your initial, maybe even daily frustrations, the very reasons why you are embarking on this life-changing journey. This will become your daily affirmations in a sort of a way that will keep you going and keep you motivated every time you second-guess yourself or the item that is in front of you. And before we get into those areas within our homes, Let's start from stopping the flow of things coming in, which mainly implies taking control over our mindless spending. You cannot achieve a clutter-free and less chaotic life if you don't get in the habit of being in control of what comes in your home in the first place. And there are different ways I built up self-discipline in this area of my life. Dealing with paper right away. I pay bills right away. I actually combined all the deadlines with my payday This way I take care of them right then, the money is there, and I don't have to let them sit on the counter giving me the extra stress and engaging my brain every time I pass by the paper pile. Pile up any store returns that you can think of still being within the window frame to get your money back, and get rid of that impulsive buying you just realized you're not going to wear or it's going to be tomorrow's clutter. Ask yourself if it's worth it or would you rather have your money back? And a particular trick that has always worked for me when I was in the making of building self-discipline with these small expenses was to pay myself the same amount I was about to spend on a truly unnecessary item. I would keep the cash and put it into my saving jar or move it right away into the savings account and the fact alone of watching my money grow instead of fizzling down was a game changer in building this habit on making unintentional decisions especially while shopping on a tired mind. It helped me tremendously translating those extra $20 a week here and there into a $1,200 chunk basically at the end of the year that I could put towards a debit or building up an emergency fund, even the Christmas gift. Practice a freeze your cards day to let your finances catch up with the statements. And on the day, for example, instead of shopping, invest the time learning about who you are, what you like and what you don't like, and what it is that is getting in the way between the life you wish you could live and the one that is holding you back. Because the majority of the times you're going to realize that it's just the noise, the clutter, the extra, that is no more a source of blessing, but the source of our stress. We are constantly trying to manage too much. Learn how to declutter for good so that your days don't become an endless decluttering marathon, 
Our ultimate goals with the cluttering should be creating a more mindful lifestyle, clearing up our spaces in order to make better decisions while learning to trust ourselves in the process. The easiest method to open up ways to the decluttering process is always aligning your current situation with your ideal being, your ideal lifestyle and goals. Realizing that a kitchen with cabinets full of stuff, random papers on the table, too many dishes, pans and appliances that we don't make much use of because we realized how much harder it is to clean them, maintain them, store them, is costing you eating out too often. Using high processed food or microwave meal as a shortcut to cooking and creating healthy meals from scratch because it's a space that just feels too overwhelming to even begin with. Our bedrooms don't invite to rest and recharge because they are an extension of our storage room or our laundry room instead. So close your eyes and envision how you would like the space to actually look and feel like. And start removing all that is in between. There is one question in particular that has always helped me in making a decision. Is making this purchase or keeping this item getting me closer to the desired life I envision? Or is it setting me back farther from living my dreams? If the answer is not a clear yes, I will not even waste my time storing that item away as a just-in-case item, because I recognize that also as a sign of scarcity mindset. Again, something that does not help me in getting closer to free my time and resources to do what I love. If I'm tackling my pantry, for example, I still use the same questions. Does this food bring me closer to change my habits into healthier ones? Does it bring me life? Soon, I started to experience the freedom that came from not being enslaved to the weight of my possessions anymore. Realizing that making a home doesn't mean keeping up with the seasonal decor from Hobby Lobby. If you're homeschooling, your house doesn't have to look like a schoolroom. Your kid's playroom doesn't have to contain all the toys they can possibly hold in it. It's quite the opposite of all that. Once we remove all those possessions, that's when we open doors to real family time, to real learning, to real freedom. Here's where to start without feeling like you're adding more onto your plate. Embrace limitations as an antidote to decision fatigue and overwhelm. It takes us about a month to turn something into a new habit. For example, if you want to get in the habit of nourishing your soul by journaling, by reading your Bible, by relaxing with your favorite magazine instead of ending up finding yourself endlessly scrolling through your phone, it might be because you feel overwhelmed at the only thought of having to place what you need to do so among the chaos, the pile of dirty dishes, the laundry that has been sitting on the couch. When I was at the stage of life, I started to force myself seeing what was truly essential to me by using a cubby or a basket with exactly what I needed in order to start building simple systems that would allow me to stick to them and turn them into new habits that would actually improve my life. So I created myself a cozy morning basket I could grab and make my me time happening no matter what else was running in my mind or around me. I had a cleaning copy to simplify my cleaning, a skincare copy, a copy with three of my top favorite comfortable outfits. I applied this basket concept to every area of my life. I stopped multitasking. I gave myself only two most immediate tasks to accomplish during my day, eliminating the need of hurry from task to task, from place to place. I started to love embracing limitations because I started to see immediate, tangible results. And by getting in the habit of moving from basket to basket, I could clearly notice how I was content living out of the essentials without missing any of the extras that I could now declare without guilt. I was reaping the benefits of living a life with only what gave me life. There's going to be times when we fall short of motivation and clarity again, especially as we try to overcome past traumas and emotions as we declutter. They might take us back to our default mode because we haven't done this long enough yet in order to change our patterns in terms of thinking and behaving. It might feel as letting go of things 
is making our life harder, as if we are literally letting go of pieces of us. This is okay. This is you learning to unpeel the past, to make room for your present life. You are learning to love and honor the current version of who you are. Remember to take time to pause and breathe, realizing that it's not eliminating the excess that is the root of your stress. Instead, it's the lack of self-discipline, mindfulness, and better prioritizing clutter created.